The weapon refinery is here, and before we start this video, I just want to point out that not every weapon is available for refining. This can change in future updates, and I'm sure the list of upgradable weapons will grow over time. In this video, I will first talk about weapon refining in general, and then I will show every possible weapon upgrade and evolution. This will be a very information heavy video, so strap in and get ready to learn. To unlock the weapon refinery in the advanced growth tab, you will need to beat chapter 13 in book 1 of the main story. You then need to beat the intermission level titled the Rite of Blades. Once you do that, you can start looking at what weapon upgrades you will have available in the weapon refinery. So first off, there are two different aspects to weapon refining. One is upgrading a weapon, and that will grant the user of that weapon extra stats. There are four different variants, in each increasing a specific stat as well as giving the user an HP boost as well. Some of these weapons you can upgrade can also come with stronger or different effects. I will point these out later on. The second aspect to weapon refining is evolution. Evolving a weapon allows you to upgrade older, weaker weapons into stronger, higher tier versions of that weapon. It is important to note that only the highest tier of a weapon's evolution path can be upgraded, so you will need to evolve some weapons first before you can give them additional stats. The easiest example of weapon evolution is that you can take your Killing Edge Plus and turn it into a Slaying Edge Plus, which has the same effect but has a higher weapon might. The Weapon Refiner can also take Legendary Weapons, also known as Uninheritable Weapons, and upgrade or evolve them as well. Upgrading a Legendary Weapon gives you the same 4 variant options as regular weapons, but they also gain access to a 5th special variant that gives the weapon a brand new powerful ability. Some specific Legendary Weapons can also be evolved into a better version of that weapon that another hero may already have. This allows older heroes to get some much needed buffs, although I would consider a few of the evolutions more like side grades, so instead of being a strict upgrade, these heroes will have different options to choose from. I will list all of the current upgradable legendary weapons as well as all the legendaries that can be evolved toward the end of the video. Next, let's discuss what you're going to need to get your fancy new weapons. First off, you will need SP, since this is essentially the same as learning a new skill. Both upgrading and evolving will require arena metals and either refining stones or divine dew. For regular weapons, you will be using Arena Metals and Refining Stones, but for Legendary weapons, you will need to use Arena Metals and Divine Dew instead. Arena Metals can actually be farmed just by winning Arena Battles. So far, the amount of Arena Metals received per win seems a bit random, but I, like I said, you can farm them as long as you have Arena Crust to enter. Refining Stones have been added to the weekly Arena Offense score and Arena Assault rank rewards, just like Sacred Coins. Both Arena Metals and Refining Stones will also be offered through Quest and as Event Rewards. Divine Dew cannot be earned, but rather is created when you use Refining Stones. From my observation, when you upgrade or evolve a weapon, the number of Refining Stones that it costs is then turned into the same number of Divine Dew. So using 50 Refining Stones yields 50 Divine Dew, and you're going to have to upgrade quite a few regular weapons before you can start refining legendary weapons. Here are some very important tips you need to know about the Weapon Refinery before you start using it. If you want to inherit a weapon and get its upgrades, make sure you inherit first, then upgrade once you have your desired weapon on your unit. Do not refine an upgraded Slang Edge Plus and then try to inherit it onto another unit. This will not work since the game says you are missing requirements and it is unclear if this is intentional at the moment. Just remember to inherit first, then upgrade. Next, your unit does need to have actually learned the weapon skill to see its upgrades in the weapon refinery screen. If you're wondering why you can't get your new 5 star healer upgrades, then make sure you have learned the highest tiers of those skills first. You should also know that you can get all the upgrades available for each weapon, however you will have to learn them separately and that is a ton of materials. For example, if I wanted to test out Ephraim's special variant or one of his stat boosting variants, I can get both but I will need to have the materials for learning each one. Alright, here are all the regular weapon evolutions. Killer weapons, anti-armor weapons, and wolf tomes all get increased might in their evolved versions. Evolved anti-armor weapons and keen wolf tomes do get something special, which I will talk about later. The assassin's bow can be evolved into the guard bow, and it changes its effect from dagger breaker to distant defense 3. This is a really cool weapon now, and we'll see if it can compete with brave bows. There are also a ton of staff evolutions that are pretty insane, however I will not be discussing healer upgrades in this video. I will be covering all of the healer buffs and changes in a separate video, since that's a whole nother can of worms. Before I discuss the weapon upgrades, there is a general pattern for what weapons get what kind of stat boost. Melee weapons generally get plus 5 HP, and their variations include plus 2 might, plus 3 speed, plus 4 defense, and plus 4 resistance. Ranged weapons only get plus 2 HP, and their variations usually come with one less point than their melee counterparts. This difference is part of the try and balance out ranged versus melee units. I would also like to note that this distribution does not apply to every weapon, again it's just a general pattern. If you want to see exactly what weapons get what stat boost, then you can check out the Fire Emblem Heroes wiki page on the Weapon Refinery, which I will be linking in the description. 
I use this page to double check all of my information, but I will be jotting down any mistakes I may have made in the description as well, so check it out if something I say seems wrong. I will be sorting the different weapon upgrades into categories since there are so many changes. First off, there are many weapons that only get stat boost upgrades and their effects have not been changed at all. All of these weapons follow the general pattern of stat boost I talked about, with a few exceptions. For example, all silver weapons and the Wold Dao Sword gets plus one additional might added to the general pattern, meaning if you do choose the defense variant of a Silver Lance, it will still come with the one extra point of might. The slaying weapons, Guard Bow, Owl Tomes, and the Tomes without any special effects all only get stat boosts. There are some weapons that benefit from a weapon class stat boost, but otherwise have unchanged effects. For example, all the Dragon Breath weapons all get plus one additional might, while Lightning Breath still does the same thing. The Dagger class seems to be all over the place, with a lot of its weapon upgrades getting different increases in might, however it seems like they have all been changed to have the same might once you do upgrade them. It also seems like all the Summer weapons did not get any effect changes, but it's nice to see that they are upgradable. Now let's talk about bow and dagger upgrades. The Cupid Arrow, which is a bridal weapon, shares a new effect with its sister weapons. With the upgrade, they now grant defense slash resistance plus 5 to the unit and allies within 2 spaces after combat. Now I want to point out something super important that affects a ton of the new weapon upgrades. Notice how the description states, for one turn. This is different than when an effect lasts until a unit's next action. I want to make sure you guys know that this wording is different and it has changed my perception about a few of these upgrades. I am actually planning on making a separate video talking about these confusing descriptions, because even though I have been playing since day one, I did not realize how much of a difference these two wording patterns can create. When an effect only lasts for one turn, it basically means that the buff or debuff only affects the unit until the end of the enemy phase. Moving on, Clarice's bow and the monstrous bow now inflict their status debuffs on the target as well as in addition to the AoE. On the flip side, all dagger upgrades now let their debuffs affect the target and all falls within two spaces. The Smoke Dagger now inflicts minus 6 to all stats after combat through their next actions, and this seems pretty insane. The Rogue Dagger inflicts minus, de or minus 6 defense and resistance after combat, and then grants allies within 2 spaces plus 6 defense and resistance for 1 turn. You can see that Rogue Dagger's description includes two separate descriptors for how long the enemy debuff lasts, and for how long the ally buff lasts. So Dragon's got a crazy buff all around. When upgraded, every breath now calculates damage using the foe's lowest defensive stat if they are a ranged unit. Dragons normally deal magic damage, so the enemy's res is used. With this change, if a dragon user attacks a high res archer for example, now their damage will instead target their defense stat. This is a crazy buff and now you will need to be careful if you see an upgraded dragon breath weapon. Light breath now grants plus 5 to all stats to the unit and allies within 2 spaces after any combat. Now at first this sounds absolutely insane. You let Ninian tank one hit on the enemy phase, and then for your player phase, all your units get plus five to every stat. Unfortunately, according to the description, this is not how it works. Again, I have to stress that for one turn means something completely different than the usual through a unit's next action. This description is extremely misleading, and it means Ninian will need to make an attack during the player phase, and then your units will get the plus five stat buff until the end of the next enemy phase. It seems very confusing, but I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this, so at the very least, please hold off on upgrading Light Breath until there is a clear consensus on how good it is. Dark Breath now inflicts a minus 7 attack and speed debuff to the target and foes within 2 spaces. Keep in mind that even though this is worded the same as attack or speed smoke, the unit does need to make an attack for the debuff to apply. I think the rule of thumb is, if a debuff comes from a weapon, it only gets applied if the unit makes an attack. If the debuff comes from a skill, then it always activates even if the unit cannot attack. Before I continue with classes of weapons, I'm going to talk about the effect of against weapons, things such as Armor Slayers and Rider's Banes. These weapons actually get a 5th variant upgrade that grants them the ability to nullify bonuses against the enemy type they are effective against, so the Armor Smasher, Slaying Spear, and Slaying Axe can negate armor buffs, while the Zambato, Rider's Bane, and the 3 Keen Wolf Tomes can negate cavalry buffs. An interesting upgrade, but I'm not entirely sure how many people will pick these. Since the Zombato was the only sword with an additional effect, we can skip straight to Lances. Rakut's Lance now grants plus 7 res when being attacked. You can even pick the Resistance Variant Boost to get even more magical bulk. The Carry Lance and its fellow Spring Weapons now heal 4 HP after any combat, not just ones the unit initiates. First Bite grants the same buff as the Cupid Arrow to the user and allies within 2 spaces. Legion's Axe now inflicts its Panic effect onto the target as well as its AoE. The Carrot Axe, like the Lance, will heal for 4 HP after any combat. Halloween Henry's Spectrotome, like Legion's Axe, applies its Panic status to the target as well. 
The green and egg blue tomes heal for 4 HP after any combat, and the blessed bouquet is the same as the other bright weapons. Now let's talk about all the special legendary upgrade variants you can get, and all of them are pretty impressive. All of Lin's so Cotty variants gets a Desperation 3 effect now, and her special variant gets a buffed up Brash Assault effect that triggers at less than 75% HP instead of 50%. Now she can free up her B skill and Sacred Seal slot for other interesting skills. Eldigan's Mistletane gets a Fury 3 as its special variant, which can stack with the Fury A skill. Ephraim Sigmund gets Hone Attack 3 for every upgrade, and his special variant gets a sort of reverse Brash Assault, which only activates when he has more than 90% HP. This is a great boost to offensive Ephraim builds. The Hot Declare for Michaelis and Minerva gets a Wold Dao effect, so that opens up some crazy offensive potential. Takumi's Fujin Yumi replaces this pass effect on all of its variants, and instead lets him move through forest tiles without penalty if he is above 50% HP. His special variant lets him move to an adjacent space next to any ally within two spaces if he is healthy. This is the same as Halloween Noe's Grimoire effect. Takumi can have a niche as being a super mobile archer, and you can expect to see him drifting around his allies to get into attack position. So Jafar's Deathly Dagger got some cool buffs. All variants will let him deal 10 damage to his target and any foes within 2 spaces after combat. He also inflicts a minus 7 defense slash res debuff to all of those hit. The real kicker is his special variant which disables enemy tome users from counterattacking. If you run double savage blow skills then Jafar will be dealing 24 damage to foes around the target. Personally, I am really excited to see if Jafar can make a name for himself, and overall Dagger's got some pretty good buffs with this update. As far as I know, the list of legendary weapon evolutions is still the same. I think Selef and Eliwood easily both get strict upgrades. Divine Tearfing is so annoying to deal with, and Eliwood gets access to Heavy Blade on his weapon while still being able to run Deathblow as his A skill. Lind, Merrick, and Julia all get access to cool new weapons, but I, would, I wouldn't say they're all upgrades. Aura lets Lin be a pseudo healer, and Dark Aura has a completely different effect altogether. Merrick trades effectiveness against Flyers for a Wold Dao effect, and uh, Julia trades her small defensive boost for the ability to nullify enemy bonuses, which is probably better when I think about it. Remember, you need Divine Dew to get these evolutions, so you better start gathering materials if one of these ed legendary upgrades interests you. I believe that is everything you need to know about the weapon refinery, as well as all the weapon upgrade possibilities that you guys can play around with. There is a ton of information, so please let me and other viewers know if I got something wrong. Next, I am planning to cover the new healer skills, but I will be taking some time to get a 5 star healer and see what exactly the new clerics can do. I hope you guys enjoyed this information packed video, and I will see you in the next guide.